Hello. You may be considering trying out fluorescent western blotting, since you've heard that it gives you more options than your plain vanilla chemiluminescent one. And you'd be right. Fluorescent western blotting allows detection of multiple proteins on the same blot, and it eliminates the need for stripping, reprobing, and cutting membranes. However, there are five things that you should consider before making the switch. When loading your samples, they should be in the linear and dynamic range. For instance, don't do that. Just don't. Fluorescent western blotting can lead to high background levels. So remember, use low fluorescence PVDF membranes and always make sure to use clean lab supplies to avoid autofluorescence. Dude, that's just gross. Consider specialized blocking buffers for fluorescent western blots that minimize background. <sighs> that is not okay. Tip number four, make sure you get to know your antibodies. Uh, just not like that though. What is the host species for both primary and secondary antibodies? What fluorophores are they conjugated to? What specificity do they display? Finally, the antibody incubation conditions, like whether you need to use detergent or not, are extremely important to reduce autofluorescence and improve antibody specificity. Also remember, using opaque containers will help minimize fluorescence bleaching. That's it, folks. With these five tips, you should be well on your way to carrying out successful fluorescent western blotting. May the force be with you.